Boom Supersonic building a commercial supersonic jetliner. This morning, though, the company announcing a new Series uh, B funding round and some other news as well that may change the face of the company itself. Joining us right now is Blake Scholl. He's the founder and CEO of Boom Supersonic. Good morning to you, Blake. Uh, congratulations Good morning. Thanks the, for having uh, me. Congratulations on the earnings. But let's talk more broadly about what's happening here, not just in, in supersonic travel, but maybe what's happening to the company. Yeah, so we are announcing a major new product today, a new customer and new funding. Uh, as we all know, there's an electricity crisis in America. AI hyperscalers can't get enough electricity. The grid isn't meeting the need. So we're actually bringing our supersonic engine technology first on the ground as a 42 megawatt power turbine. We've got 1.21 gigawatts on a launch order from Crusoe going into data centers. They'll be powering the next generation of AI. So who would have thought that a uh, airplane maker was all of a sudden going to be in the AI business. This may change your valuation and just the way people even think about it. How much of this is a priority for you now to actually get into this energy business to power AI data, data centers versus the future of supersonic flight? And can you, you know, chew gum and walk at the same time? So we, we've come to believe that the ground power turbine is the fastest path to bringing back supersonic passenger flight. Of course, we already built the airplane behind me. We proved we've solved sonic boom. We can do it with airliner technology. And the first thing we've been doing for almost four years now is scaling up the engine technology. But it turns out supersonic engines are the exact kind of turbines you need to generate clean, efficient, scalable energy on the ground. So what we're doing is first testing that engine on the ground. We'll have hundreds of thousands of hours of test data as we produce electricity for AI, and that will allow us to have the most tested new jet engine ever when we're ready to put it on a passenger jet. So when I first heard about this news, I thought, my goodness, this could be a new way effectively to change the economics of your business, which is to say, I think for a long time, people always thought there was a risk to your business, which was you got to spend a lot of capital up front effectively to build these planes and to get them in the air, and that, you know, that, that is a risk. This seems to de-risk some of the economics. I think you're exactly right. I mean, the, the biggest challenge we've had over the last 10 years of building this is financing a relatively long capital bridge for a commercial supersonic airliner development. And what we're able to do now is self-finance this. So today's funding, 300 million in new financing, allows us to deliver first the power turbine and then use the profit stream that generates to finance the supersonic airliner. So from this point forward, we are entirely self-funded. That's pretty extraordinary. How big a business do you think the powering of AI and, and data centers will ultimately become? I mean, if we were to have a conversation a couple of years from now, how big a business is this? And, and how does it change or transform just, again, you know, everyone wants to be able to chew, chew gum and walk at the same time. But the truth is, oftentimes you have to prioritize one thing over the other. Yeah, I've, first off, I think it's going to be a gigantic business. There, There is far more power need than ability to deliver it. Uh, Sam Altman, who was one of the very first boom investors, has said he wants 250 gigawatts just for open AI. Forget about all the other players. So uh, it's very clear we're going to be able to build, uh, be able to sell as many power turbines as we can make. Our, our goal is to produce seven and a half gigawatts cumulative through 2030, which is about 1% of the U.S. grid. We should probably challenge ourselves to do more than that. And then we are working on the jet in parallel, but the, you're right, the priorities are clear. We're going to ship the power turbine first and then ship the airplane. And then, Blake, what is the, the, the risk or the competition of risk from other airline uh, makers and jet engine providers? They may see what you're doing and say, oh, my goodness, we should be doing this, too. In a certain sense, they already are, but they're doing it with 1970s technology. I mean, Elon really pioneered this idea of building a vertically integrated power plant with a large array of small turbine engines. That's how Colossus 1 and Colossus 2 work in Memphis. That's how Stargate 1 works in Abilene, Texas. These are all modified jet engines, but they're modified 1970s subsonic jet engines, which means those engines are really happiest when it's minus 50 degrees outside at 30,000 feet. And by the time it's a hot day in Texas, you actually have to throttle the engine 
engines back to prevent the turbine blades from melting down. Supersonic is completely different. This is all about high temperature technology. I mean, think about how Concorde actually got longer when it was going supersonic. You had to paint it white so the paint wouldn't burn off. And so supersonic engines are designed for 160 degrees, which means that when it's 110 in Texas, it's kind of no big deal. And that allows us to actually maintain full generation capacity, even when it's hot outside. So one of our units does the work of like two traditional units. So we've got a huge competitive advantage versus these other engines that are coming from the likes of Vernova, Pratt & Whitney, Rolls. Uh, Blake, we got to run, but I just have one final question. And I know they're rolling the music over us. When, as somebody who's spending all their time in aviation, what was the moment at which you said to yourself, we could be in the energy business? Well, we actually planned it three years ago, and we bought all the energy domains a long time ago because we always had plans to be in this. But earlier this year, I got a call from Sam Altman, another call from Coley Cabinets at Crusoe, and they both said, Blake, we need you to move that up. We need it right now.